have in your mind. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, you Madhavji. Thank you. A very good afternoon to everyone, and uh, I welcome all the members sitting at different places, Pan India. Uh, my name is Rohit Dhand, and uh, I'm going to present a session on uh, how the e-governance uh, can be clubbed with IT to perform best of the functions in any organization. Uh, I work with LPU as uh, additional dean uh, for software development, and I'm uh, heading the division of Infotech right now. I joined uh, LPU in 2001 when it was not LPU at that point of time. It was called as Lovely Institute of Management, and in 2006 we got the status of uh, LPU. But uh, in 2002 we had uh, the vision of uh, probably creating a system that can help us in getting on to some system where every stakeholder of the university, of the organization can participate, can do every kind of a function on a click of a button and use the maximum use of IT probably for performing every kind of task. Uh, I'll be going through a presentation, a series of the uh, things where I'll uh, showcase the product which we have developed, how it was uh, developed, what are the features available in that and then probably I'll showcase a full-fledged uh, functional demo on the same, how it is exactly working and I'll show you the live presentation to actually use that product. So before I start off, uh, there is one basic question. Everybody talks about governance, e-governance. So what is exactly governance? So to my mind, governance is uh, referring to any action or manner of uh, governing. And uh, governance can relate to primarily three things. One is the state, one is the organization, and one is the company. So probably it may be a private company, it may be a public company, or a government running a country you need some kind of a governance. Uh, it involves process of governing, establishment of policies, monitoring of their proper utilization by the members of the governing body, and mechanisms which are needed to balance the powers of all the members who are part of that governing body. And ultimately, the goal of the governance is to provide an end user experience where the user feels, yes, he can do the, all this stuff with all the transparency, and on the click of the button. You don't have to move into lines, you don't have to stand into queues, you don't have to move here and there to get your work done. The system is transparent, it is helpful, it is user friendly, and you save the cost as well as you save the time with the help of the governance. Uh, so why we say e-governance? The major thing which come in mind after governance is people talk about e-governance, every government talks about e-governance now. So when I say a governance is mixed up with IT, it primarily forms an e-governance. That is the proper use of information communication technology, that is the ICT based tools, mixed up with governance. If properly mixed up, you can create a very, very good system, a system that can help each and every stakeholder. So why we add ICT in governance? Why there is a need of that plus sign to, so that we can add up that ICT factors within the governance? Uh, there are a lot many reasons uh, for that because IT is one of the major ongoing uh, principles which everyone is using, whether we use mobile phones, whether we use desktops, whether we use websites, everything. IT is a major role to play and we are connected onto mobiles, we are connected onto social networks, we are connected onto everything. So we use ITC and governance to probably deliver the services in a better and the best possible manner. Integration of the various standalone systems that are functioning, for example, if I move on to any government system, I have to get my develop, let's say, uh, some kind of a uh, uh, this uh, transportation uh, or even um, I've got a license to be built up. So that license is individual system which I have to get around. I've got something else to be created, a car registration. It is not primarily linked. So this ICT enabled techniques can help you to link up these systems which are primarily running at different uh, scattered stages so that ultimately all the data is shared you get one particular performer, one particular data that can be analyzed and can be used anywhere. And of course, we want to use ICT so as to provide uh, uh, all the services on a click of a button. Now, user wants every end user, he wants to pay the bills online. He wants to pay everything online, whether they are bills, whether they are marks, whether they are systems, everything user says, whether an online service is available, you don't have to stand queues. Even if you're going to see a movie, people would prefer credit cards payments and all that stuff rather than going on for the lines, getting a ticket from the window and uh, doing all that stuff. You can see possibly sites like Make My Trip, Amazon, all the e-commerce boom. This is all because of use of ICT. 
So providing services to the users in a convenient, efficient and congenial manner and the primus sense to my mind is to reach the beneficiary. Beneficiary means the person who is intended like for which the system is developed and in case the same system is being used and is effective for that person, I think so you are 100% successful in giving your services. That's why we use ICT in governance. Okay, so why the use of technology in governance? To reduce difficulties for business, provide immediate information and enable digital communication, reusability of our data in different formats and reports, reduce cost and time, that's the biggest thing. Every organization wants to reduce on the costing factor as well as the time factor and also to bring in the transparency. Uh, performers like uh, the rules like RTIs and all that stuff people want all these things to happen on the click of a button and they want everything transparent I don't have to worry about how the system works but yes I can go on to an online website fill up the details click the button and the things are done for me less labor cost of course majority of the things are covered through the system and one of the last but not the least that is going paperless as you know paperless is one of the most important aspects which governance should adopt and contributing towards green environment. We should not cut more trees to generate papers, rather go on to the initiatives that can help us to go paper, uh, paperless. In case you can see a lot of companies are also taking initiatives, whether it is Airtel, whether it is mobile companies, banking companies, they keep on asking you whether you want to go, let's say, uh, paperless and you want to get the bills purely on your emails, purely online, so yes. So you should also try to contribute in the same manner by going in this particular way. So this is all a little bit of a governance. So why e-governance at LPU? At LPU when we started off, it was a system which we wanted to develop that can work for our students, our parents, uh, the staff members and even the higher level management. So these were the stakeholders that were majorly involved or we had in our mind like how the system is going to affect all these stakeholders. You can see primarily we wanted to concentrate on the students and parents, the staff members who are going to work with LPU and the management. Management needs a different kind of a data. Every person has a different kind of a requirements. But primarily these were the major stakeholders for which we wanted to bring a good governance. So LPU has yes successfully implemented e-governance through this is the complete life cycle of a product called as a university management system. We call it as a UMS, uh, a small acronym for university management system. And you can see it's a complete system which starts from admission, goes to curriculum, goes to teaching, goes to examination, goes, goes to passing out, and then finally becoming an alumni. So complete life cycle of a student is maintained through this kind of a system. Whether it's parents, whether it's students, they all work through this system. And in fact, the other stakeholders like the employees of LPU, primarily they work through UMS. And in case, it is popularly known, in case the UMS is not working, probably the employees stop doing some work because they say, UMS is not working, fine, we don't have any work to do because nothing is uh, offline, it is all purely online. So how e-governance has helped LPU? Yes, it has helped in a lot of ways. We are able to bring the transparency in the system and faster processing of the information on a single click. We have reduced in terms of uh, manpower cost and saves tons of papers. I just imagine LPU has a 30,000 students, regular students studying on campus. Just imagine the number of the timetables, printouts, the changes which are to be done in the printouts and re, -instant, uh, re putting it on the notice boards. It involves hell amount of a task. But all this stuff has been properly now uh, handled with the help of a university management system and we have integrated because we started with a very small concept but then we ultimately thought like these systems should be integrated a student is not only interested to see his marks online or his result online he wants to see his fee details also he wants to see his for example marks he wants to see his grades he wants to put an assignment online he wants to download the assignment uh, through an online mode he, he in fact wants to communicate with his teacher with the online mode he wants to put up a complaint regarding some kind of a problem with the help of an online mode. So all these things help us to 
uh, like evolute our own systems and then probably integrate those systems into a one major system known as university management system. And yes, because it's a purely online system, we have increased our reachability, not only to a smaller part, rather throughout the globe. Our system is accessible. I'll showcase a demo also, uh, by which I'll use my user ID and a login to see how the system works for me. And in fact, I'm over here to present this session. So all the leaves and everything, I have to sanction online. So I don't have to worry about the person who is there, who has applied for a leave. I'll show you how I'll sanction it. So I don't have to be physically present over there. I can access that system anywhere. And because it's online system, it's a 24 by 7 and 365 days working for us. So you don't have to worry about whether you are sitting at home or you are traveling. The whole power pack system works for us. So who developed this uh, UMS? Uh, as I'm heading that division, uh, this is the division of Infotech, which uh, we uh, are. Uh, we are uh, constituting with the few uh, subdomains within this. We have a data center in it. We have an office management cell, which manages the complete division. We have a web development that manages the complete website and the other aspects. We even provide the infotech training, that is, the students who are going to be trained on some of the technologies that are useful for building up this kind of system. And we have a full-fledged software development cell. That's a complete cell. It's purely in line, purely, sorry, in-house. The system has been developed. We have not taken any kind of a help from the outside or a consultancy or anything. We have evolved our own system and grew it on the same kind of experience. Uh, this is how we can access our system. How to access our system? You, UMS can be accessed through a standard browser. Although we have now apps that are supported on iOS, Android, or the major platforms. But yes, you, in case you want to access those systems, uh, inside the campus, you can access it through the link uh, above, which is mentioned, and outside campus, just like I'm outside the campus right now, so I can access that UMS on the ums.lpu.n slash lpums. And uh, because this system holds a very lot of uh, sensitive data, might be the students' records, our salaries, increments, other sensitive data, it runs on a pure uh, secured socket layer. You can see that S uh, coming into HTTP. So S means a secured socket layer, which encrypts our data while transferring from one place to another or on the network so that it is just like at the same standards which are being followed by the banks, which are being followed by the other companies to safeguard their data. Uh, few of the uh, ICT honors, we have been honored uh, and uh, honors and awards help us to uh, uh, what you call work more and uh, it gives you the motivation to perform better. Uh, LPU was awarded uh, the best ICT enabled university of the year through Ministry of Communications and IT, Government of India. We got this award successively in year 2011 and 2012. Uh, this is one of the trophies which we got. Uh, we've also won the Siksha Ratan Award, uh, awarded by Government of Punjab for the best IT innovation in higher education. And that too also was the uh, university management system. The next big award, which we really think, yes, it helped us to prove that we have developed really a good system that can help anybody. That was the India 3.0 IT Innovation Awards. It was given by NASCOM and CNBC TV18. And uh, it was purely a jury-based award. A lot of uh, prominent personalities from the industry were the part of that jury. And uh, I had the honor uh, to receive the award uh, in Mumbai on the behalf of the university. So what is exactly a university management system? Yes, it's a web-based ERP software. You don't need any kind of an installation, any kind of a stuff. You can use that ERP software through a standard browser, whether it's Chrome, whether it's Firefox, whether it is Internet Explorer, any standard browser, and you can access that. And it constitutes numerous kind of modules, whether it is HR, whether it is accounting, relationship management systems, e-governance, appraisals, manage, uh, vendors management. And you'll be surprised, like from this system, I can make it out what kind of appraisal I'm going to get after one year because it purely works on a points-based 